Now, each year the IRS typically tries to release something in order to give taxpayers an understanding of the completely ambiguous and unclear FBAR reporting requirements. Let's go through the basics of what's in the fact sheet. Not too much has changed, but just it's good reiteration of what you may need to do. The FBAR is, uh, is a FinCEN Form 114. Uh, FinCEN is the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, but try to remove the, the term crimes uh, from your mind. It's, it's an unfortunate title. It refers to foreign bank and financial account reporting. Since around 2013, the form has been filed electronically and it's filed directly on the FinCEN website. It's used to report the maximum value of your accounts if the annual aggregate total of your foreign accounts, not just per account, but if the total value when you aggregate them, if they exceed more than $10,000 on any given day of the year, then typically you will have an FBAR reporting requirement. It's not limited to individuals, it's US persons, entities, trusts, estates may have to follow it as well. And the big issue with FBAR is non-compliance can lead to fines and penalties. Uh, try to steer clear of the ridiculous fear mongering you'll find online. It's almost never criminal and oftentimes it's not willful, but in general, penalties can issue for non-compliance. So some of the key issues presented in the, uh, in the FBAR fact release is the following. The April due date is still the date that the FBAR is, has to be filed, but it's on something called automatic extension, which means it's extended till October. Taxpayers don't have to proactively do anything. They don't have to file like a form 4868, which you use to extend your tax return or a 7004, you use to extend things like form 3520-A. If it's a joint account, Let's say you own a joint account, it's $250,000, so it's $125,000 each of you. Um, assuming that's what the setup is like, it's not always like that, right? But assuming it's that way, you as a joint account holder have to report the full value, the, the 250, 250000 not just your portion of it. It's the maximum value of the account, not the maximum value of just your ownership in the account. Um, children have to report as well, which is absurd. Little Timmy four-year-old with a minor's trust account or something similar in the UK, you'd have to report that as well, depending on how the ownership is held, who has control, who can access it will determine um, who has to file, whether it's the parent, the child, or both. Some additional issues to keep in mind, <clears throat> excuse me, Puerto Rico is not considered a foreign country. So if you have accounts in Puerto Rico, they're typically not supposed to be considered foreign. You wouldn't report that on the FBAR. Uh, Non-compliance should be resolved quickly. So uh, again, steering away from the fear mongering, what the IRS is saying in this notice is, is, hey, if you're out of compliance, you should get into compliance because the IRS will penalize you for non-compliance, okay? I, again, steering away from the fear mongering stuff, it doesn't mean <clears throat> you have to worry about going to prison or that you're necessarily willful. It's just if there was a mistake or non-filing, you should get into compliance because the IRS is serious about the penalties. To, get, to give you a little bit of, of background, the form is a FinCEN form, right? Financial Crimes Enforcement Network. It's not an IRS form. But since I think it was 2003, the Internal Revenue Service is tasked with enforcement. And ever since the introduction of FATCA, the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act, which became uh, required on the tax return, I think it was 2012 for the 2011 tax return. Um, just generally offshore reporting and compliance has become a key priority in general. If you're out of compliance, there's various programs available, but it's it's been a little different lately because some programs have been terminated, other programs have been modified. If you're willful, really the only option you have if you're gonna get into compliance is the voluntary disclosure program. Uh, if you're non-willful, there's many other options available. Still, you could do the streamlined filing compliance procedures, which includes streamlined domestic, streamlined foreign. They're both for foreign offshore accounts. It's domestic is for, for non-foreign residents. There's also things called reasonable cause and the delinquency procedures, although the latter was modified November 2020. The program's not as forgiving as it used to be. Um, we have lots of free information available on our main website and our sub-websites. You can always reach out and schedule a reduced fee initial consultation if it's something that we handle here. Again, my name is Sean Golding with Golding & Golding. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.